right welcome to victor's mac my name is victor i'll be taking through the maths yec 2019 questions let's start with number one objective question okay we say express correct to three significant figures 0 0.003597 now if you look at the unit the tens and the hundreds they're not significant so we're going to start counting from this so this is one two and then before we write the third one a simple question we have to ask ourselves here is that this seven will round this up because it's between the numbers from five to nine inclusive from five upwards it will round up so definitely we're going to add one to this that's the kind of round off we're going to do so 9 plus 1, we have 10, keep 1. Then we have this, 6, 3, 5 plus 1, 3, 0 points, 0. And the correct option is option C, okay? Option C. The next question, number 2. The number 2 question is on loss of indices, all right? The first one is approximation. This is loss of indices. We have to evaluate 0 0.064 raised to the power minus 1 over 3. The first step is to change this decimal to fraction and we have 64 over 1000 raised to the power minus 1 over 3. We have two laws of indices to be applied here. The negative power which is also called the reciprocal law. So the reciprocal law would switch this so we're going to change the numerator and denominator we're going to have 1000 over 64 okay raised to the power 1 over 3 and then the fractional power here the denominator serves for the cube root of 1000 over 64 and what's the cube root of 1000 we have 10 the cube root of 64 is 4 don't forget we have the one here and that doesn't change anything the numerator of your power here doesn't change anything so 10 root 10 over 4 when you simplify 2 here in 10 is 5 and then 2 here is what 2 so the correct option here is option a okay number 2 this question is on algebraic equations to solve for unknown, unknown. Why? Now, the first thing is to look at the denominators. What are the else? I mean, what are the denominators? Two, three, two, three, and one. All right. So, what's the LCM of two, three, and one? That is six. So, we multiply all the terms by six, and that's very simple. We multiply the first one by six, the second one by six, and then also the third one by 6. Now 2 here we go 3 times so we're going to add 3 into y plus 1. Also 3 in this 6 is 2 so we're going to have minus 2 into 2y minus 1 equals to 6 times 4 we're going to have 24. When we expand this 3 times y we have 3y. 3 times 1 we have 3. Minus 2 times 2y we have minus 4y. All right minus 2 times minus 1 we have plus 2 equals to 24. Collecting like terms 3y minus 4y is given to give us minus y. 3 plus 2 we're going to have 5 then cos to 24 all right so transferring minus y to the right hand side we're going to have positive y left with 5 on the left hand side and transferring 24 from the right to the left we're going to have minus 24 so our y is minus 19 minus 19 and that's option b option b number five or oh, number four sorry okay 2019 question number four this has to do with uh, numerical processes. It's a difference of two squares. So if you're going to apply the, this concept, difference of two squares, quadratic expression involving two variables, we factorize it this way into linear and another linear. All right. So we're using that concept here for 27.63 squared minus 12.37 squared. We're going to have 27.63 plus 12.37 and then 27.63 sorry minus 12.37 okay when we add up this we're going to get zero keep one then this also nine plus one ten keep one seven plus two nine plus one ten then this gives us four so we're going to have 40.00 and that's the same as 40 
simple then we subtract when we subtract 27.63 minus 12.37 all right this is going to take one here which is 10 so 13 minus 7 we're going to have 6 5 minus 3 we're going to have 2 then 7 minus 2 5 2 minus 1 15 0.26 so we have 15.26 all right this is the same thing as multiplying 152.6 times 4 the zero here has shifted this point to the right hand side here okay all right so let's multiply when we multiply we're going to have 40 24 4 times 6 is 24 all right 4 times 2 we have 8 8 plus 2 we have 10, so we have 0, keep 1. 4 times 5, 20, plus this 1, 21, so we have 2. Then 4 times 1, we have 4 plus 2, 6. Now we have to do it to the correct the three significant figures. So we need to count this is the first, second, and then the third. Looking at this 4, the kind of round off here, this 4 can't round this one up, but it's rounded down because it's not, big, it's, not from, it's not numbers from 5 upward. So we add zero to this zero we're going to have 16 so the answer is d option d is correct answer number five number five is about modular arithmetic all right and it's that what number i said if seven plus y equals to four modulo eight find the least value of y between this range 10 less than equals to y y less than equals to 30. now the first thing is to establish that the numbers are going to have what number must be added to seven as y to get four all right, let's do the normal linear equation. We we'll transfer y means seven to the right hand side. We're going to have four minus seven, and that's y equals to minus three. Now, all we have to do is to think of all the multiple, I mean, just add eight to this minus three. So the next possible answer, because this minus three doesn't lie within this range. So another possible solution is to add eight, which is our modulo. So we add eight, we're going to have 8 to minus 3 is 5, but 5 is not within this range. So we're going to take add another 8, that's 13. You can also get more values by adding 8, 21, add 8, 29. But these values are not permissible, even though they are within this range. But the reason is that they said find the least value of y. So we our final answer will be 13 because it lies between this range. It means that when we add 7 plus 13, which is 20, when we divide them by the modulo. We divide 20 by 8, the quotient is 2, that is it's 2 times remainder 4. So we are really interested in the remainder because in modular arithmetic, we throw away the quotient, we only write the remainder, unlike in number based system. All right, so the answer here is option B. All right, okay, the next one, number 6, it said if t is the prime numbers and then m, odd numbers are subset of the universal set. Now, our universal set are the set of integers x. 0 is strictly less than x. That is, our x is strictly greater than 0. All right? And x is less than or equal to 10. So, what are the values here? We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. All right? 10 is inclusive, but 0 is not included. All right? So, t, what are the prime numbers between 1 to 10? The prime numbers we have two, three, five, seven, and I think that's all. Okay. Then for the odd numbers, we have odd numbers. We have one, three, five, seven, nine. Okay. Now for t prime, we're going to have the t prime or t complement means the elements in the universal set, the universal set, but not in t so what are the numbers missing here we have one we have four we have six eight nine and ten but for the m complement or you call it m prime all right because we have to find t prime intersection m prime so m prime also means the same element in the universal set but not in m and what are the missing elements or numbers we have two four six eight and ten now looking at these two sets what is the intersection between them what's the intersection t prime 
intersection m prime what's common that's the meaning of intersection where do they intersect okay all right so we have four it's common six is common eight is common and ten is common definitely our answer is option a four six eight and ten option a all right the next one is about logarithm exp simplifying logarithmic expression in fractional form we have several methods but i would like us to use this method log three log nine base three all right simplifying this nine how do we rewrite nine with the power of three that is three is power two and then the two can be transferred forward here we have two log three base three and then that's the same thing as two times one because the logarithm of the base itself is always one and that's two then for the second time at the numerator log eight base two all right also the same procedure we're going to have what can we write for the power of two to give us eight that's two to the power of three so transferring three also as the question we're going to have three log two base two and log two to base two is also one one of the laws of logarithm says that log of the base is always one so three times one we have three now using that into this problem the numerator will give us nothing but two for the first time minus three for the second time take note this value here is the same thing as what we have here the logarithm are the same so that's the same thing as two here so we have two minus three is minus one over two and the correct option is option d all right okay number eight the number eight is about number base system we're going to convert the two sides of this equation into um base 10 and how do we do that all the terms on the left all the digits must be multiplied by y this y so two times y addition to three times y the same thing on the right hand side all the digits must be multiplied by the base 2 so we have 1 times 2 1 times 2 1 times 2 1 times 2 all right then we assign powers from the last base 2 here 0 power 1 2 3 also for the y2 this y here will raise power 1 then this y will raise power no sorry this one will be 0 and then this one will be 1 all right okay so 2 times y we have 2y y to power 0 is 1 so 1 times 3 we have 3 the first one is 3 is power 3 that's 8 8 times 1 we have 8 3 is power 2 4 times 1 we have 4 3 is power 1 2 times 1 we have 2 3 is power 0 is 1 1 times 1 we have 1 okay all right when we had all the right hand side okay, let's have this first then we had all the right hand side 8 plus 4 12 12 plus 2 14 plus 1 15 subtract 3 from both sides or you just simply say transfer 3 to the right hand side comes negative we're going to have 2y equals to 12 divide both sides by 2 then our y equals to 6 so the base number here is actually 23 base 6 and the answer is c all right the next question is on sequences this is arithmetic progression or you call it arithmetic sequence now in arithmetic sequence we know that consecutive terms differs by a difference and it's always common difference and how do we get common difference is to always subtract from a term the immediate previous term for this case now the previous term to p is 6 so we subtract 6 from p that's a difference also next to 14 is p i mean next to p is 14 sorry so we subtract from 14 p to get the common difference meaning that these are consecutive terms i can say to call it first second and third but it's not actually i mean meaning that well it's actually first second and third it can be fifth term sixth term and seventh term all right so for the concept is that when we subtract from a term the previous we we'll get the common difference and when we subtract from a term the previous we're going to get common difference and then we quit them because it's a common difference so let's solve this equation now Collecting like terms transfer minus p to the 
from the right hand side to the left, we're going to have P plus P. Then transpire minus 6 from the left to the right, we're going to have a positive 6 on the right. That's 20. P plus P is 2P. So divide both by 2. P can 2 cancel 2. P equals to 10. And then the correct option here is option B. All right. Number 10. All right. Number 10 is about swords. All right. Swords. Now, I would like us to take it one by one. Say, evaluate 2 root 28 minus 3 root 50 plus root 72. Let's simplify each term. Let's start with the first term and get the simplest form of this. Now, we're going to decompose this root 28, root 28 into a perfect square and non-perfect square. So the perfect square here that we will decompose this is 4 and then 7. So 4 times 7 root 4 times root 7 is root 28 back. So what is root 4? It's 2. So that's 2 times 2 root 7 and that's 4 root 7. That's for the first term. Then the second term, 3 root 50. Let's just keep the minus for now. So now we have 3. Now how do we decompose root 50? That will be a perfect squared, that is the square root of 25, which is perfect squared, times root 2. All right. Root 25 is 5. So 5 times 3, we have 3 times 5, root 2. 3 times 5 is 15, and we have root 2. Okay, then the last term, which is root 72, the two numbers, one will be perfect, another one will be non-perfect as 36, another one is 2. When you multiply, we're going to get root 72 back. So root 36 is 6, and then times root 2, that's 6 root 2. All right, now let's transfer all this back to our problem. We're going to have, for the first one, is the same thing as 4 root 7, then the minus, don't forget, there's a minus. Then the second term is 15 root 2 plus the last one, which is 6 root 2. All right. Now, the last two terms, they are both having root 2 root 2. We call them similar sorts. The first one is root 7, so it's not similar to the last two terms. So we're not going to match the first with the last two. Only the last two are common sorts so minus 15 root 2 plus 6 root 2 is seems as the way we do minus 15x plus 6x and that's minus 9x so in this case it's minus 9 root 2 and the correct option here is option c all right thank you